you know, what is it they say? First comes love, then comes marriage, then comes so-and-so pushing the baby carriage. So after mating comes parental care. This is actually pretty rare and not all that common amongst all species. So we'll try to make this quick. A lot of this should be kind of common sense to you to some extent. And we say that a lot, but you may or may not be familiar with this. Parental investment versus parental care. These are actually two definitions from the same book. Uh, parental investment is kind of the bigger category and it encompasses parental care. So parental care is part of parental investment. We define parental investment as any investment by a parent and an offspring that enhances the offspring's fitness at the cost of the parent's ability to invest in other offspring. This has kind of a negative connotation in it. The idea being that the parents are going to lose something by having offspring, but they are having offspring and that is a gain for the parents as well. Whereas parental care tends to have a more positive connotation. It says the behaviors by a parent to enhance the fitness of the offspring includes incubation, feeding, and defense. And so, again, it's a little bit more positive way to put it, but care is involved in investment, but not all investment is care. I think I said that right. So parental care benefits the children. It leaves out the negative bit. It's not a big difference, though, but just so you're aware of this. Um, neoteny is a theory of sorts, and I put that in quotations because it is an idea, and I don't want to spend a lot of time harping on this, but I came across an image in a, one of my textbooks that I look at in this course, and I wanted to show it to you. And it's basically the idea that we see juvenile features, and it kind of, I think it's actually supposed to be juvenile features in adults, and so it makes them look babyish to us, and there's something about the baby characteristics that make us make us and any organism want to take care of them. And you can tell when something's a baby. Their face is more round, their eyes are bigger, maybe their ears are bigger. Um, you can see the human baby, you can see the baby otter, you can see the baby kangaroo, the baby puppy, the baby or baby dog. Uh, the baby seal, you can, you can tell there are some similarities in those baby qualities. And apparently even Lorenz went into this. So this is a picture, I apologize, it's, I took it with my phone and it scanned up and so it didn't scan exactly like I wanted it to. But it shows how the baby looks compared to the adult. And the idea being is that they have a high rounded forehead, so the forehead's a little bit different. You know, and it kind of sort of makes sense to some extent. They have small noses, large eyes and ears, and that these make are attractive to adults and basically says protect me is pretty much what we have. Remember several units ago we talked about domesticating foxes and how they kind of changed appearance a little bit. And a lot of people, they can have a 10-year-old dog and they still refer to it as a puppy because there's something about domestication that kind of, and that's why I did want to put this in here, it kind of tends towards those babyish features that we see. But again, this is not a great theory, this idea of neoteny. And I don't want you to really be aware. I mean, I think you should be aware that the theory is that we, it seems to be in many places that we will look after children because there's something about their traits that are attractive to adults. But in a way that we want to take care of them and such. So, but it's, 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 it's a, it's, it's a theory. Again, theories in science are proven or believed true until they're proven otherwise. And so it's sometimes, it's often very difficult to prove a theory true, but I digress. I don't want to spend any more time on that. Uh, so benefits and costs of parental care. Uh, benefits of parental care is you're going to increase the offspring survival. Your genes get passed on short and sweet. I know it's a very crude way to look at things, but that's how we've done things all semester, isn't it? Costs of parental care, energy, takes time, takes resources. Now these resources can be like from humans, it's money, but it could be shelter, water, food, stuff like that. It only, and the more you have, the more offspring you have, it's going to increase those resources as well. Obviously, you know, true for humans, if you have twins, it's going to be twice as expensive as if you only had one child. You know, so you could see this with, you know, more children, you're going to have to spend resources into them. Parental investment um, increases the survival of the offspring while reducing the parent's ability to invest in other offspring. This is kind of a weird way to think about this in some ways is that your gamete 
investment is there. So you you produce an egg, and these remember egg production in general for females is very costly. But depending on what type of um, species you are, so like if you're like this blue-footed uh, booby that we see here, she's on top of a couple of um, eggs, she's not going to probably ovulate, she's probably not going to try to copulate again until she has, you know, raised these chicks and weaned them and, you know, had them leave the nest. Um, you know, for mammals that become pregnant and carry their offspring, that is, you know, they're not going to get pregnant again until they have finished with that offspring and move along. Uh, preparation of the environment, beehives, honeycombs, nests, all these are things that the parents have to put into this. Uh, care of fertilized eggs, the placenta incubation, only, can only um, incubate the current brood, can't invest in a future brood until this one is complete. And that's kind of a weird way to talk about it, but like males can go and find another female and reproduce, and they go find another female and they can reproduce. The female has to bring what she has to term, whatever that is, and then she has to wean it or hatch it or, you know, get them large enough that they can, the fledge, they can fledge, they can leave the nest, they can fly, wherever that may be. So there's a lot of investment that comes from mom. Parental care comes from feeding, lactation, protection, home or shelter, cleaning and grooming, keeping warm. Remember the hamsters? We were, I think it was hamsters. No, it was California mice. California mice where the dad even needs to be there in order to keep the, the brood warm enough. Uh, teach social behaviors and survival skills, especially in mammals. We see this where we have to raise the children and show them how to do things, but we see this in other organisms too, not just mammals. Uh, support in conflict. We see this with social primates. The female chimps are going to protect their offspring and they're not going to back down in a fight. Their parental care is you see this in various groups amongst different organisms and it's interesting because I can look at stuff like this and be like hey let me go find a video to show you all that and it'll be completely opposite. I'll give you an example. Crocodiles. Crocodiles and alligators you'll notice that typically the female is the only one that really cares about them. The males almost never but there is a lot of species where both parents are support for the offspring. So I was looking for videos, and the one video I came across was talking about dad, and it showed dad, and he was a big, mean-looking crocodile. It says dad doesn't recognize the offspring and is likely to eat them. So this would not be a biparental crocodile. This would be a female-only type crocodile. So, But it's interesting to point out that crocodiles, reptiles in general, um, lizards and snakes, you know, they have very minimal care. So crocodiles seem to be the exception to this. For some reason, they tend to be a little bit more per parenting than other types of reptiles. Frogs and toads, you can see this. And again, I think, is this for just North America? I don't think it says that. But frogs and toads have very minimal care. But there are some great examples where we can show you, and you'll, I'll show you some videos where, both, where either the dad cares for the offspring or either mom and dad both care for the offspring. Uh, which seems unusual, but it does occur with these. So I'm not exactly sure where they're getting this information from. And you'll notice these numbers do not add up to the families or the species that they're talking about. Cichlids are a type of fish. I think they're found mostly in African lakes. Um, you'll see a lot of biparental care there, but also female only. Birds, they're going to be the winners of most biparent care. You know, both parents are participating. And then after that, you see a lot with primates, primates especially. Now, in non-primate mammals, typically mom is going to deal with that. Because remember, that's one of the definitions for mammals is that mom you know, produces milk for the babies. I think that's one of the definitions for mammals. It's been a while since I've done that. But we see that going on here. So and just to kind of sum up a few things, fish, about 25% have parental care. Males, more often than females. Uh, males will actually care more for the fish uh, for the babies and fish than the females will. Reptiles, parental care is uncommon. If so, it's probably more likely going to be the female than it is the male. But the crocodiles, female and male, both can respond to the hatching call underground. So you can get by parental care with crocodiles, alligators. Makes you wonder if, if crocodiles are almost like a whole different level in that respect, doesn't it? Maybe. Maybe it's just me. Uh, birds, the most uh, by parental care that we see by far. Um, and mammals, 100% have female care because, like we said, that's the definition for 
fat mammals, but about 5% have direct male care as well. So let's ask a few questions and see if we can answer a few of these really quick. Uh, why is female care more common? Well, there's the investment hypothesis. Females have invested much more energy in the production of the egg, the incubation, the gestation, etc. It would be risky for her to abandon the offspring. The offspring wouldn't have as much of a chance to survive. And if they're less likely to survive without mom, then why did she even put any energy into it in the first place, really? There's also the paternity uncertainty hypothesis. Females are more likely to be a parent of the offspring than the male. They could be a different male to be the father. If so, the male would gain nothing by raising another male's offspring. So the male strategy is better for him to go find more mates than for him to stick around and try to help raise offspring that may or may not be his. Also, there's the order of gamete release hypothesis. This says that patterns of parental care result from differences in the opportunities for males and females to desert their offspring. Sounds pretty mean, doesn't it? But think it has to do with fertilization. And, and I, said, I put it est. If the parents can release gametes and leave, they will do so. That's basically what this is saying. So internal fertilization, if the enable enables the male to desert the female, the female is going to carry them to term. So it, she has to defeat um, the female has to provide the parental investment. Well, she doesn't have to, but she usually does. External fertilization is where the female lays the eggs and the male um, lays the sperm to fertilize them outside of the female. Um, and there are variations on that theme, but females deposit the eggs first and then the male deposits the sperm. Usually male has to provide the parental investment. You see this more so with fish, like with the clownfish here looking at his brood of um, fish. I think the mom may stick around with this and not to mention the fact I think almost all clownfish are actually born male according to the video I'll show you in a little bit. So pretty typical of that too but you do, fish often will simultaneously release the gametes out into the ocean both the eggs and the sperm and so you tend to see that. Frogs will actually provide a lot of male care as well and they'll release sperm before the female places eggs in the nest. So again, there's different ways like the female could lay the egg and the frog then you know fertilizes it or the female lays out eggs and the frog is in that amp amplexus on back of the female holding on so that he can um, fertilize the eggs. There's also the association hypothesis. Females are more likely to be the parent present during birth or egg laying. Males may not be around. They could be off doing other things and they're physically separated from the progeny so there's no chance for them to provide care. Again, there's exceptions with this again. You can see here, this is what's called a mouth brooding fish. So the male keeps the eggs in his mouth. There's a lot of fish that do this. This is a Randall's jawfish where they do that. And then we could see here um, a male bass defending his nest as well. So a lot of times the males will stick around and guard and fish. You see this very often in fish where the male does care. And the theory goes with that, and I don't think I've done a good job explaining that, is that females put a lot of time and energy into the eggs. And so the males kind of reciprocate that by being the ones to guard the nests afterwards. And the females can then spend their energy going off and doing other things as that works. So I've done a lot of talking. Let me show you some videos here. So the, the clownfish, most of us are familiar with from Disney's Finding Nemo. Uh, so we'll look at that. Uh, this middle video here talks about underwater mating. And so you, we can talk about the external fertilization. It's a great video to show external fertilization in a couple of different style, two different species of fish. Uh, poison dart frog parent. You can see here he's actually got the tadpole on his back. And there's a reason for that. So if you've never seen this video, it's it's from the BBC Earth. Um, very interesting video. And this particular one actually shows biparental care of poison dart frogs. So I'm not exactly sure how this fits into that chart we were just looking at. But this was unusual. It's unusual to see both mom and dad caring for the babies after they laid the eggs and such. And then chimpanzee mother and child because you know, it seems like everything we talk about, oh, and primates are more like this, which is also like us. So anyway, get you to go watch these videos. I'll see you after this. We'll come back.